So here I have my latest pickups and there are loads of very interesting packages of different shapes and sizes here. Um, usually I buy this stuff over the course of a few weeks or a few months and I don't often know what's in the boxes or packages so without further ado let's get started let's try and open up the first one. Now this one has come in from a retro store which is called DA Retro and it is a copy of Street Fighter Alpha 2. Now I had a copy of Street Fighter Alpha when I was younger on the Sega Saturn and I used to love that game um, but apparently Street Fighter Alpha 2 is much better and this cost me £27 which is probably about $35 or so. Street Fighter Alpha 2 is from 1996 um, and get this it's both a sequel and a remake of the previous year's Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dreams which I had when I was growing up uh, on the Sega Saturn. And Street Fighter Alpha was meant to be a prequel to Street Fighter 2. Now at the time this one was cited as a much better game than Street Fighter Alpha and actually it got some really good reviews. I had a quick go of it but I think I'm going to have to learn some of the controls of the players because other than characters like Ryu, um, I don't really know many of the moves anymore. Next up is this one here and I think the glue may have lost its tackiness because it's opened too quickly here. And this is Sylphid for the Mega CD. This cost me £9.50, so this cost me £9.50 which is probably about $12-$13. Now this is quite an interesting game because I believe it uses full motion video because the background is actually a pre-rendered video that's playing and you're just kind of being guided over it a bit like a rail shooter. Um, and then the ship itself is being generated in some polygons. It got some really high scores at the time for reviews but personally for the Mega CD I always really love Soul Fierce. I think it was probably one of the first games that I saw being played on the Mega CD. But this is a cool game and I'm going to give it a go and see how it goes. Uh, next up we have this one here which is a kind of package in a package in a package. It's cost me £7.75 so it's about $10. This is a screen for a Game Boy but it's not any normal screen. As you can see it's got a wider screen area. Game Boy usually had that kind of small screen in it. Um, this is a very special screen because it fits the bezel of a Game Boy case but it's large enough for a larger screen and that's for a Raspberry Pi project which I've actually made earlier. Um, this is my first attempt at it. As you can see it's a little bit ghetto, a little bit sort of um, held in place by tape and there's a few things which need to be fixed and I put four buttons in there, a couple of joysticks and on the back you can see that there's some trigger buttons and some shoulder buttons and also you can actually see the Raspberry Pi sticking out of it. Anyway, um, this is going to go towards my second attempt at a Raspberry Pi Game Boy. Um, which is really cool, I used the Raspberry Pi 3, it was quite difficult, I had to actually cut the board down to get it in there. Um, and I probably have to hide it behind a game uh, case. But it runs Nintendo 64 games, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, next up is this one here, which again is very well packaged. I'm always very impressed at how people package things. And this is House of the Dead 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. This cost me £9.99, which is probably about $13, $12, $13. 
Now, looking inside here, um, some interesting things. This really bizarre uh, advert for Dreamcast at the time. Sega's always had a reputation for being quite an edgy uh, games company or edgy console maker. And certainly their advertising never held back. Unfortunately, I can hear some teeth uh, of this rattling around inside. And your classic Dreamcast huge manual, which I'm never going to read. Um, I think it must have all the languages in the world in that thing. But anyway, that's that. And as you can see there in the corner, those teeth from the CD just rattling around. Now, I'm not sure if that was done in the post. I'm not sure if that was done beforehand and just left in there. But it seems that I don't have a complete Dreamcast case. They seem to easily break. I was a massive fan of Virtual Cop 1 and 2 on the Sega Saturn. And so House of the Dead was one that I always wanted to get, but I never got it. Um, and House of the Dead 2 came out on the Dreamcast. There was plans to put House of the Dead 3 out, but as you know, the Dreamcast really died a death very early on, so never came out on that format. Anyway, next I have a box which has eBay written on the side of it. I'm being very careful because my dress is on the other side and I don't want to show it. Um, this is a Dreamcast controller, and it's also got VMU inside there. Now, I've never had Dreamcast, so I'm looking forward to getting to explore these a bit. You can see that from the bottom of this one, there's a bit of colour difference between the actual top and bottom there. It's been quite sun damaged, so what I might have to do is retro bright that and try and bring it back to its true colour. These actually take two um, 30, 32 coin cells, so batteries that are, look like coins. Um, which seems to be quite a lot for them, and I think that's the biggest problem. They, a lot of the time, people have to re be replacing batteries in them, and if you've got like four or five of these, that's a lot of coin batteries you're going to have to replace. So what I'm going to do is probably look and see if I can actually make a rechargeable version, because this controller over here should be pulling some voltage from the console in some way. Anyway, the controller's in really good condition. I don't see any real problems with that. And also, in here, there's actually a rumble pack too, which is pretty awesome. Now you can probably see that the rumble pack is a little bit yellowed. Um, again, it looks like this thing has just been left near a window or left in direct sunlight at some point. And it's gone a bit yellow. I can easily fix that by just putting some bleach on it, some hair bleach, which is process quite a lot of people call retro brighting. But it is just putting some hair bleach on there and then putting it out in the sun. Anyway, this cost me £20, so I think it's quite a good deal, really. I got three really cool things out of it, and hopefully if they all work, then I can use them on one of my Dreamcasts. So this one's quite interesting, the way it's packaged. Um, looks like a sort of Frankenstein's monster of boxes here that's been put together. Let's open it up and see what's inside. As you can see, the, the, the blade that I'm using there isn't very sharp. I'm having to sort of cut away as I go. This is kind of a wedge of a thing, it's quite well packaged. Um, and inside here, we have loads of bubble wrap, which is always good. Now you might have seen a famous face there, but this is Street Fighter, the movie, the game, which is on the Sega Saturn. This cost me £28 and 3p. Um, this is quite a hotly bid one, um, and I wasn't going to pay more than £30 for it, but there we go. Now, as you can see, there's some of the stars of the movie. There's Jean-Claude Van Damme and Kylie Minogue. Um, there's a few other people that were in the, the movie that have gone to various other things. And also, that was actually the last movie that Raoul Julier um, was in. He famously played Gomez Adams in the Adams Family films. Now on the back you can see some of the screenshots here. I love this um, E Honda's hand slap, like you've never seen it before. All these kind of great descriptions of it. Jean-Claude Van Damme as Colonel Guile. What's interesting about this game was that it's not the arcade game that came out. So they actually digitized the actors from the film, apart from um, Raul Julia and a, a couple of other characters. Blanca's not in it, and also T-Hawk isn't in it as well. Bison is actually played by Raul Julia's stunt double. 
Um, but all the actors that were in the film were contracted to be in the video game. Now, the video game, like I say, is not a port of the arcade game that came out uh, for the film. It's actually a, a completely new entity in itself, but it's very similar. Anyway, as you can see, the case is in two parts. It's a bit of a shame about the case. And this middle bit here looks like they've just used the mold for a CD case and then just added a little bit more to that mold. Um, it is a real shame. There's a lot of these cases have come in pieces and it seems more difficult these days to actually get a complete case than it does to get some of the games that are out there. But the seller has packaged it quite nicely with these bits of foam which has meant that it's not got scratched or anything like that. It's always really nice when you get something where a seller has been really kind and actually packaged it well. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to giving this a blast. It should be a very interesting game. From playing it very briefly it plays really clunkily and it also feels like it has a really low frame rate. Anyway, uh, next up is some cat food. Um, well actually this I don't know where this has come from. This box, this long barcode on the box makes me think it's from a really cheap supermarket and this is some really cheap cat food. Uh, but again, this is another interesting weird thing that the seller's packaged it up in. I do love getting weird boxes and weird packages um, that sellers put things in, which is quite fun. Uh, just because it makes my uh, unboxing a lot in more interesting. Anyway, inside here we have, well again, <laughs> some really weird um, ways of packaging up. There's some, just some random plastic bags there. Uh, and we have Star Wars on the Sega 32X. These games are advertised at £130, but I managed to get the seller down to £85 in the end. Star Wars Arcade was actually one of the first games released on the 32X, and it was the game that they really kind of hoped would sell it well. It was a big hit in the arcades, but it didn't really help the 32X. Doom on the 32X. <laughs> Doom on the 32X was another rushed game and it was actually put out with a really small Windows playthrough and I did read that the code was written and then it was rewritten. Again it was rushed to market and so it wasn't a great game and what came out later was some really good console conversions. I had the Sega Saturn version which I actually really quite enjoyed. Again from the seller there's some really interesting ways of packaging and this is a plastic bag from well it looks like a charity that's trying to do something about dementia well there we go anyway that's an interesting bag I think we'll maybe use that at some point um, next it we have afterburner complete Now Afterburn is one of those games that I remember really well from arcades when I was younger um, and it had that really cool arcade machine where it kind of it rocked backwards and forwards um, as you were moving around which kind of added an element to it. 
I believe it has some sprite scaling in it. So the 32X was the first time that they could do some of those sort of sprite scaling things. And that's why sort of true versions of things like Space Harrier came out. Next we have Metalhead, also on the Sega 32X. This is a 3D first person shooter where you're basically controlling a mech. Um, I don't know if you're meant to be the driver in the mech or if it's just a, a, a remote control one, but you are going around blasting other mechs in these kind of cityscapes. Again, it took advantage of 32X's ability to do polygons and various other things like that. So there we have it, a real mix, um, a lot of Sega there, and actually quite a few generations of Sega. As I've said before, I'm a real Sega boy, um, I've got a lot of love for the Hedgehog, and growing up I really had Sega machines, so it's really nice to get sort of more things for those and actually explore some things I never really had when I was younger. Um, I'm looking forward to taking advantage of that Nintendo uh, Game Boy large screen. I've got a really cool printed circuit board that somebody's made to fit inside a Game Boy and it runs off the Raspberry Pi 3 compute module which I'm really looking forward to actually getting my hands onto. That's something for another video and hopefully I'll be able to make a short video about making that and putting it together. The Dreamcast controller is also going to be something for another video so keep your eyes out, perhaps I'll post it at some point. Anyway, thanks for watching, do all the things that would make me happy, like, subscribe and do the bell icon thing. Thanks, bye bye.